Welcome back, everybody. It's JJ. And like I said, I've been playing some Dark Tide here lately, so run you through some of that. Uh, probably just go with my Psyker. That's what I've been having the most fun with. Psychic Flamethrower build. That's what I'm going with. It's been pretty fun. I'm not gonna lie, these loading screens are very long. I say very long, they're about 30 to 40 seconds sometimes. And I guess it's server side, because in Vermintide 2, it's not this long at all. This is loading into the little ship area. The little cutscenes and everything in the game, eh, they're not the greatest. Like, the first couple are about it. The rest are just really not worth watching. But, you got four classes right now. It's technically supposed to be five, because the uh, Tech Priest is not in-game. It's supposed to be this my little Psyker here. I got him one of those uh, aesthetic suits you can get with the, the currency in this game. It just looks cool. There's a bunch of armor you can get in the game without uh, doing that, though. Speaking of, go check that out right now. It's where you come to get different weapons, things of that nature, and they roll their stats, like 71% damage, charge rate, all that stuff. I'll have to go into depth about that stuff way later, what each one is, but, uh... Hmm, buy that. Ooh, max health and that. These like a little trinket you can carry with you. Uh, this game's kind of like Diablo 2. Where you're looking for the best rolled item. Like, okay. Really good damage, really low mobility. I really have a bit of low damage. And you want to see if all those are, uh, you know, a bit higher. And this is where you can buy uniforms. This is all aesthetic right here. It really has no use in the game. Other than the rule cool. So we're going to go and get into a mission here. They, these missions are about 23 minutes long, roughly. Oh, the higher the difficulty, the longer it's going to take. I'm playing at rank 3 difficulty. Because I'm just trying to level this guy up. Max level is 30. See my little setup here. Purchase his staff. And Mark V Combat Axe. And a quick overview of these. They're just talent points. They have a slight effect in the gameplay, depending on the class. I, I mean, it's not like Vermintide 2, where it, your build's really dependent on those. This is a lot more friendly, I guess. Just pick up and play. You get ultimate ability you can use every so often. A ranged and a melee weapon. And grenades if your character can have them. Alrighty. So it looks like I joined into a game that was already going on. Where is everybody? Oh, there they are. And a Psyker, you can make people's heads explode. It does a massive amount of damage. But the only ranged attack I have is part of my flamethrower staff. If I see that number of the center go up right there, if it hits 100, my head explodes. Because, you know, can't contain the power. This right here, you see me use this quick little burst. It'll uh, momentarily stun enemies. Really should just burn. It exploded. <laughs> Stay back. Burn heretics. Yeah, you get to totally RP in this game too. And that should release a horde. I'll take that med pack from my team. Something I can place down. Feel it up, oh, he was saving Last deal. Mine. Thank you. Alright, these little white triangles, that's where we're supposed to be going. Probably not a good higher difficult to explain the game. Hack and slash, best way to explain it. I think of like Left for Dead. Just in the 40k universe. Blue fire. Get cool things with my talents, whenever something dies from the fire, they uh, all get stunned. Well, they call it stagger in this game, but it's a stun. Looks like there's two of us in here. Two psychers. Purchase a staff. 
And the game is relatively dark as far as graphics. Not all the levels are like this, but a good portion of them. Characters have built-in flashlights and stuff on them. Psyker can be put into two classes, like mostly a support and a heavy damage dealer on bosses and what they call elites or specials. That's his guys you'll see glowing orange and red. Yeah, and the flamethrower kind of takes up the whole screen, uh, but it looks so cool. And there's different cosmetic outfits and everything you can put on. Okay. This is where you heal up. We've only got two charges, so the guy with the lowest health has got to go first. That would be top left of those four brackets. Yeah, and I didn't bring an extra wound. So I've got those three white bars. I should have taken one that would give me an extra uh, block, just considered wounds. Uh, better stick together in this game too, because like Left 4 Dead, they've got giant hordes of enemies that come out. And they normally have a telltale sign, like the music will start and there's lots of roaring and stuff, I guess. I haven't got to use my uh, ultimate ability yet, which mine is just an AoE stun. Right there. It gets rid of all the, that number in the center there that's built up. Oof. Ranged is definitely your enemy. Flamers have like a bleed over time effect, basically, or damage over time. Of course, start playing video games, people start texting. Every time, y'all. Every time. So they get built-in like radar detector. JJ's on his games again. Start a full-blown, full-paragraph conversation to start out with. All right, the guy back in the red. That's an elite. Grenades. I don't want to step to it because it. I've technically got two health bars. That light blue one is like a shield. You leave me no choice. Oh, sorry, I got distracted there. The light blue one's like a shield that regenerates over time, and the white bars are your actual health bars. And fire actually eats through your shield to your health. So. Just kind of spamming my stun there. The stun's really kind of broken. That's why a lot of people are using it. So that little thing he's got will actually make one of those healing stations power up because they're placed intermittently around places. And some of them have four charges, some have none. The ones with none have to be charged up. And I can never remember where they are on the maps, and I've played these maps a ton. I've never seen the market so quiet. That's all the right guy. Uh, there's too much stuff. Get this pleasing enemy advantage. Uh, out of range from this stuff. You can actually increase the range of your flamethrower, but they call it radius for some reason on the uh, stat roll. Which I thought would make the cone bigger. Nah, just makes the flames go further. Hey. 
I was so hoping that wasn't right on top of me. Grenades hurt. Funny effect. That grenade fire, you see right there, that napalm bomb, actually hurts enemies too. Bobbing and weaving. Bobbing and weaving. Oh yeah. What's cool about the Psyker fire is uh, it'll actually go through barricades whereas a regular flamer will not for some reason. So I just don't know if that's something with the coding or that's how it's supposed to be. So. Unfortunately, there's no like real end of the game score of who did what, did the most damage like in Vermintide 2, but uh, we got to Initiating crowd control! Meantime, that AoE knocked down. Okay, well, you can just handle these hordes like there's no more. Alright. If you notice the top right of the screen where it says Seize Grimoires, uh, same thing as Vermintide 2, where you picked up these magic books. And that purple stuff you see in my white health bar, it's called Corruption. And when you pick up those books, it automatically takes out a certain percent of your HP. It spawns more enemies, but it gives you more, uh, more XP and points at the end of the game. It's supposed to help you have a higher chance of rolling a better quote-unquote magic item. So, you finish the match, you get a free item, a bunch of XP, stuff in the future. And it's just supposed to make it better. You can take little trinkets that reduce that purple corruption in your health bar, but since I'm still lower level, I don't get really good ones. So. I already messed up by not taking a. Not an extra wound trinket. Sorry, I get distracted. Get some armored enemies like that right there. Bursters are just living bombs. Still got a med pack. I think this is a kill mission. Different missions, some are go do this objective, and some are kill missions. Kill missions I prefer. The objective missions are just survival games. With a few little things put in there, like, hey, fix this uh, hacking device that you put on earlier. You can play a little minigame for it. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, that was Panic Queen throwing right there. You can slide, and it's actually supposed to make the enemies less accurate when they're shooting you, but. Oh, there was a guy in front of me. Oops. I think there's Plasteel over here, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, really? Alright. I got greedy. I'm gonna hang out right here. Check this text message. I was looking at my phone. And it's a bit faster paced game too at the later levels. Difficulty uh, 1 and 2. You got time to do some stuff like that. <laughs> 3 plus, yeah. Kinda of dedicate 20 30 minutes just to straight look at the screen. I'm not kidding, I thought everything was dead. If you lose all your health, you don't necessarily die. You go into like a. Uh, what do you call it? A fall down mode. So when you're on the ground. Get some revive you, kind of like Call of Duty, things of that nature. Excessive force authorized. So you get a second chance at life. Now when you get resurrected, you don't have a whole lot of hit points, but you're still alive. And that can become clutch in certain games where most of your team's down, or you're the only one left alive, and you're trying to get people back up. And I'm being greedy. 
I need them. That stuff I'm picking up, it helps you to reroll uh, perks on your item stats on your items. Thank you. Reaching into the wall. Oh no, no. Ah. Tox flamer. Oh look, a tox flamer. Where is the medicate? Oops, may have dropped that out a little too soon. This looks bad. I'm allowed, but that's what matters. He's gonna run back there to the medic kit. Ammo. You notice that little blue war around Emmy's heads in the distance? That's when I'm doing a brain burst. That's what they call the ability. It's overall a decent looking game. It's fun. It's different from Vermintide 2, but kind of the same at the same time. It's hard to explain. It's the ranged version of Vermintide 2 different setting. I would say one of the main downsides is the limited number of maps. I think there's like 10 or 11 you can go through or maybe a little bit less than that. You'll be seeing the same enemies over and over. And difficulty increase just gives them more hit points, spawns more of them, you know, that whole thing. My pick. Okay, yeah. okay. Let's go, boys. And the other yellow symbols we see laying around, that's like ammo and grenades, but this character uses neither. On this kind of build. You're troubled, explicator. Don't deny it. I'm just trying to... Oh yeah, and your characters, you get to choose the voice when you start the game. It's only a few options, but you see down there in the text. I think you should pray for forgiveness, explicator. That's an ogren right there. Well, you can support character I guess that is another psyker just like me and that is a zealot that's a hey melee heavy character it's supposed Your to be it is a kill blade, mission father. he has a shield and a health bar yes. Yes. and the void spawns and I used up that Wrong time. Nothing new there. They're gonna be coming behind us in a second. Try to get my bleeds on him. Yeah. He gets a shield back constantly. Aggravating. Oh, that was a good knockdown. Get my plane on him really quick. Where to really move, so just burn, burn, burn. Surprised there was no uh, elites. Normally there'd be two or three of them spawn. Oh, there we go. There's the other horde. Easy peasy. And the Zealot, the heavy melee character, they're the only ones that get a flamer, besides uh, us, so to speak. Normal missions, you have to go to an extraction point, and that's kind of aggravating, because they put it uh, not too far away, but enemies will spawn and can kill you on the way out. You're not really losing anything, it's just more of an aggravation. So, 22 minutes. The higher difficulty you play, the more experience you get, etc, etc. I mean, it's a fun game. That's pretty much its entirety. Like, if you get tired of War Thunder, you want to do something different. This is, uh, it's not bad. Play for an hour, hour and a half, you know, get home from work, and you don't really want to try to win games, I guess is the way to say it. Because in War Thunder, you do got to try it here and there, but, you know, you might get some bad matches. Like, I went live earlier, and, uh, just could not get a kill in. I played a handful of games. 
partly that's on me. So, but there you have it, guys. That is Dark Tide in a nutshell. Just my little quick, dirty rundown of it. I'll see y'all next time.